Welcome to another episode of the Creative Power Hour. I'm your host, Marcus Whitney, and today my guest is Badass Ben Sticks. What's up, brother? Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. So you and I connected because of a mutual friend, Mm -hmm. Marsha, who's had one of the more iconic episodes on this show. She talked to me about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And we met in your parking lot. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there was a Humane Society event. Yeah, it was a big like barbecue cookout. Yeah. Vegan extravaganza fest. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. And it was during the summer. And I actually had a friend in town um, who used to live in Nashville, mm-hmm. who I did martial arts with for like three, four years. Yeah, um, who was vegan, uh, and and he was like he was not just vegan; he was punk rock vegan. It, they go hand in hand. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and and so I was so excited that this thing was happening the same week, and he was right. back in town to give me like something to take him to right. that he would really enjoy. So I'm like, yeah, Marshall, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. Uh, you know, the dunk uh, the, booth. The, the, yeah, that the was dunk all booth her thing. Idea. Yeah, the I dunk was booth thing. About the dunk booth, but she's like, no, let's do it. Like, oh. It worked. It yeah, worked. It was cool. fun. It was yeah. fun. Um, what I did not expect was to have like one of the best outdoor barbecue large event meals i've ever had me neither in in my life but it was it was kind of crazy it was great the the food's always really good and we had like a bunch of the different vendors around to kind of like bring the community together and showcase different things yeah and everyone's had a great time i think the lines were super long and within 10 minutes it was packed it was insane yeah it Mm -hmm. was dope so uh so i know a little bit of of your background but this show always starts with with an origin story i have a feeling yours is it's, Fantastic. It's definitely an interesting story. Uh, it all started with a band. Um, the BE stands for Born Empty. Okay. Which, um, well, hold on. First of all, where are you from? I'm originally from like DC, Maryland area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So DMV. So I grew up there and then pretty much right after high school moved uh, to Murfreesboro for MTSU to do music. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And w- I started doing like, went from music business. Okay. And then I like, after, you know, it, in the second year, I'm like walking on campus being like, I hate this shit. You know, just, like, <laughs> I hated it. Yeah. So I dropped out and, um, started doing some other things and getting into production. I wanted to do music. I learned that the music business was not about music. It was about business. Yeah. And like, I wanted to play music and do something cool. And okay. In a band. Okay. So I kind of just did that. And then, um, started to go back into school and is had I got peer pressured into dropping out and started touring with like a country band and doing rock. Okay. And then that transitioned to me coming up to Nashville. Okay. So so like when you were growing up, who were your musical influences? Like like what 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 hooked you and gave you the just passion to like make rock. this your life? Just rock. Okay, like, name name some bands cuz I got to know the era a little bit more. I was uh I was so in love with 311, it was ridiculous. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah that's I, legit. I, well, I'm kind of ashamed of it now. No, but back but then, like, nobody back then, was ashamed was, of it, dude. Was, yeah, them, yeah. And like Incubus, and like yeah. Def, Deftones, yeah. okay. any of that, and then, you know, kind of just getting into hip-hop and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I've always yeah because there, there was a little things. bit of a, during that era of rock and, and rap. It was like that new metal rap rock yeah, scene. Yeah, right. That, 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 right. That's what was like super popular, like. Limp Biscuit, yeah, corn. Yeah. So of course I was like into that stuff during that. Yeah, time. but the mashups were were totally cool. Like right. n- nobody was seen as weird for mashing up the, yeah. the genres. And then, and then and then you know it was cool, and then it wasn't. Then it wasn't know? right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's you know still not super cool anymore. But you know back you know back then. Yeah, some of that still stuff still holds up. Yeah, you know? I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, that, that, I just want to know, like, yeah, you know, what was? It's like, funny because he was like, "What's your what was your favorite band ever?" And I was like, "I've never loved a band more than 311 before," yeah. and I'm kind of ashamed of it because like the first records were cool and then they just like dropped off. Yeah, but yeah. like whatever. It is yeah, what it no, is. it's no, it's all good. It's all yeah. good. Okay. Um, so, but then I was playing music and dropped out and moved up to Nashville, toured for a while, um, ended up in this band, Born Empty. Okay. Um, just because that's how bands work. You're like, with this band, you work, someone decides not to do it, they move, you know, and then things switch. So I played with this band, Born Empty. I moved in the house, um, and they called the house, like, the Beehive, because huh. Born Empty, B-E. Yeah. And they was, like, called the Beehive. Yeah. So we all lived in the Beehive. It's clever. And um, we started using the B-E, just like on hoodies and stickers like 12 years ago or something like yeah and um started putting that everywhere and what what was cool about that was like it's it was more than just like a band it was like an it was like a state of mind yeah like a lifestyle kind yep. of thing where it's just like b yeah you know so like even on those stickers like from the beginning it just like it would just be like b e and then maybe in the corner it'd be like like 
the high, like the born empty.com or now like in the corner, it says be the hive, like mm-hmm. really, really small. But like, mm-hmm. you look at the sticker, it says be, and you, you wonder what it means, but like it, it's just like be, and it, it has your own meaning to it. Yep. And I've had actually people like come up to me and be like, wait, you're the guy putting up those stickers. And he's like telling me like a personal story that like kind of helped them through a t- moment where like they needed and they looked over and like on the wall, there's like B and they're like, huh? And they had no idea. And then they started seeing them all over town and right. everywhere. And then they found out that it was either me or the band or the beehive. And they just like put it together. And it was kind of a weird little thing. That's dope. Yeah. Um, and then we were, we would just like be on tour and be like, Hey, like let us sleep on your floors. We're cookie breakfast. And we went from anywhere from like having, like staying in a mansion. Cause we were just a rock band making no money. Yeah. Like just doing it for the love of it. Yep. Um, but we found ourselves in like mansions with like pantries full of all the ingredients you could uh, like imagine. But then also okay. there was one time like we had to like disinfect the entire kitchen and they didn't even have salt <laughs> or pepper and you had to just figure something out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So we would like cook breakfast on the road and that got us good at cooking and we'd have potlucks like at our house and they're all vegan. We had like 80 people over there I counted once. Okay, so I was about to ask you when the vegan we were vegan. Happened. Yeah, me and me and the main singer, the singer Eric. Okay. We became vegan when I was in the band. Okay. And so we like, were so, so we so were cooking after we, the band formed. Yeah. You all made this decision. Yeah, it was mainly me and him. Okay. That and then everyone else kind of just tagged along because we were the ones that were cooking food. Okay. Yeah, right. Right. Um, and then that and so that's as a band we were cooking on the road and then having these potlucks that were vegan and we got kind of good at cooking. Um, all of our stuff was always like the best at the potluck, but there'd be like this table full of just vegan food and people loved it. Mm -hmm. And we were always like, we should open up a beehive or a restaurant. And then that band fizzled out. Um, and then like kind of, I guess a year or so later I was with another band. I was working at wild cow and I, I quit wild cow cause my wrist was hurting. Um, and I just had an idea that I was like, what if I just did a pop-up buffet one day a week? Uh huh. At Wild Cow, because I had done the AIDS ride in LA, mm-hmm. and that's like this big, uh, like benefit ride for AIDS, where there's like two, three thousand people riding. They have raised like fifteen million dollars a year from San Francisco to LA, and I just like saw what was going on, and I was like, "How do we do this? And how do we get a nonprofit involved?" And then I was on my bike, and I was like, "Ah!" And I just like on Tuesdays, the Wild Cow was closed. It always boggled my mind. Why would you close on Tuesday? I was like, let me take it over. I'll throw a pop-up. I'll do a buffet that's all vegan for $10. I'll benefit a different nonprofit every week. The menu will be different every week. Um, and I'll give you a percentage of it. What year was this? Started in 2011. 2011, okay. Yeah, okay. And, that was, and that was the beginning. I, I had that idea. They said yes. I started the LLC, and I started throwing buffets that once was pretty week, early in the pop-up scene here. Once a week for a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. I counted the other day. I've since then, cause we only do like last year we did two or four events mm-hmm. the year before we did like 10, but I've done like 72 events. Wow. Pop-ups. Um, since I started. Okay. So I've got these like questions behind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just gave you the entire. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so how did you get like there's, there's one thing of cooking out of necessity because you're on the road there's another thing being good enough to operate a pop-up right right and i've worked in restaurants before and like working in a restaurant does not necessarily translate to i can cook a buffet for people wherever i go so like where did the ability i learned i learned that at at wild cow working at okay okay. so and i guess i'd always just kind of figured it out like we got good at cooking at home because you couldn't find vegan food anywhere. Right. You had to cook yourself. You had to cook food for yourself in order to be able to like eat right. what you wanted, especially in Nashville. Um, then, because at that point, like wild cow wasn't even open. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, and then I worked at wild cow for like a year, maybe a year and a half or something like okay. that. Okay. And I just, I got, I learned a lot, you know? Um, and just t- t- tell yeah, me about I just t- figured it out. Like literally I was like, I can do this. Tell okay. me about the people who opened wild cow and like John and Melanie. Yeah. Okay. So they just, they worked at beyond the edge and they just, they were vegan and they wanted to do it. And they, I guess they, and just they just took a leap. They just, they just did it. They just did it. And it was kind of a shit show when it first opened. But yeah. like when somebody that's never opened up a restaurant opens up a restaurant is a shit show. Right. And I came in like, I guess several months after that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I just, you know, I just learned and you know, the guy that works for me now, um, 
Gavin, he's like my second, my right hand man. Like he always made fun of me because he had like gotten hired like a week or two after me. Yep. And I, and when he came in, like I came in and I was like tell, acting like I was his boss guy, or I was just telling him what to do. And he's like, "Who is this dude?" Yeah. And then they, he was like, "Oh, this is the boss." But then just realized that I had only been there for like a week or two. But I mean, I just figured it out. I just knew how to like the buffet. You just learn, and every time you learn something and something goes wrong, you fix it, and just you make enough food and you develop a menu that's like, ah, oh, I'm going to do this and. A lot of times we wouldn't work on the menu. We would, I would figure out the menu for the buffet and we would have all day and we would get it right that day. So, so if, it did, if it didn't work, it didn't work. So I, but like, it always I'm, I'm just sitting here and I'm hearing everything you're saying, but like mm-hmm. there's, there's this, this list of questions are sort of like just generating yeah. in the back of my head. Right. Um, and I guess one of them is a philosophical question. So it's really about living outside of the the standard job economy okay yeah right because there there's something to being a band and like you know i think i think the where i was kind of stuck a pin in 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 what you were saying was we would go to places and we would just say we'll we'll like, yeah. On stage, like, it would be like, "Hey, we need a place to stay. Yeah, yeah. We'll cook yeah, you breakfast if you let us stay exactly, on the floor. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like, like that. That whole mm-hmm. willingness to live on creativity and bartering. Yeah, right. Like, that's what drove us. Yeah, and it's just like you know, I've always, I've never wanted to have the nine to five. Like, you know, I've always been against like work until you can retire when you're sixty and yep. then get to enjoy your fruits of labor. It was like, I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, and do what I want to right now. Yeah. Like while you were doing that, was there any, was there any thought as to this is going to build fans or this is going to sharpen our trade or like, like what was, was there a quote unquote long game to that approach or would you just I call mean, it, I, we want to live our lives right now doing this and this yeah, is a way to accomplish this without that trying to put sure. money in the middle of it. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that for sure. There's the whole thing of like making art and, you know, you make art to create things because you want to express what you're feeling and do, and you want to create art. And as soon as you start creating art for like someone else or doing it, it becomes, it's like not genuine and you, it just becomes a different thing. You know what I'm saying? That's why I dropped out of schools because like music business is not about music. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create music and be part of a band that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And for the band aspect of it, it's like, you know, the, we wanted to like, you know, what hit it big or just be able to like live our life. We wanted to make money, but it's just like, we wanted to be able to like play music for the rest of our lives and be in this band, which is mm-hmm. like a band of like brotherhood. And if you, if you're ever in a band for that long, it's like, you get so close to everyone. Mm-hmm. As long as if you can, if you don't kill each other, right. And you get along, you become friends forever. Like you just, you're like brothers with that person Yep. because you're in a van, you're making music with them. You're creating on stage, you're doing this and it's, you, you know, that person so well. Yep. Um, so even those people, different bands I've been with, like, you know, two, three years later, after maybe either not talking or hanging out every day, we get back together and it's, just, it's like, just like it was, you know? Right. So, I mean, we, yeah, we were, we were trying to do something like that, but I, I've also truly believed that like, and the way I've like directed my whole life is that if you just surround yourself by the things you love and always do that, and whether it's like I started working and doing like production, like audio production and building stages and like setting up lights and audio, um, and then I worked for the symphony for 10 years and I've learned what Nashville taught me is I can learn how to make money on the side while I can go do my art and my craft mm-hmm. everywhere else, you know? Um, and so I just, f- I always felt like if you can just do what you wanted to do in some way, or you were just in, in what you, in the industry that you loved and that, that you wanted to be in, in any job. And if you excelled, it would just create opportunity for you to keep growing for the long run. Right. Have you, uh, are you familiar with, um, the Japanese concept Ikigai? Mm, no, not, not, no. It's a several century year old, uh, concept around, uh, purpose. Yeah. And, um, I'm not sure that it's like universally held throughout Japan, but it, it right, originated yeah. in, in okay. Japan. And, and basically the idea is that, uh, purpose can be just like, if you're thinking about a Venn diagram, like purpose can be distilled as the intersection between uh, what you love to do, mm-hmm. what you're good at, 
what the world needs and what the world will pay you for. Right. Well, because you need to be able to survive and need to be able to flow, right? right? Because if you just do something and make art, but you're completely broke and you don't have enough to like pay your bills or like live somewhere. I mean, it, it, you could, you could be ha- homeless on the street and still be happy. Yeah. Like if that's what you want. Yeah. But you, yeah. I mean, you need to find that sweet spot. And so it's like sacrificing certain things. So you're able to do other things. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's not to be expected, like when you're super young that you're going to find that. But mm-hmm. I, but I, th- I guess what I think is really interesting is um, there's a question about where you start to a, yeah. to arrive at that intersection. Yeah. No one in their these... teenagers, teenage years or their 20s like hits icky guy. Like it's just not, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I would say we're going to get into your into what you're doing now and mm-hmm. what the beehive is today, not the band. Well, and, right. Or, but, but yeah, like, but it all started with music for right, me. Right. Right. Literally, I mean, I moved I it started I, with what you loved to do. Yeah. Not even what you were that good at, right? Yeah. Cuz you had to develop your skills and right. at playing but music and mm-hmm. and being in but a band. But that's how but yeah, I also that's kind of how I got into drums too. Is like being playing trombone at seventh grade and like the director calling okay. out the snare drums and being like, play this right. And like, they weren't playing it right. And it was directly behind me. And I was just like looking back and I was like, let me do it. I can do this right now. Uh-huh. I can do this right. And from uh-huh. that day I started going in after school and playing drums. So I, I did have like a natural ability to be able to with rhythm and drumming and, and, and pick things up. Yeah. You know, quickly. at least with that, like, I mean, I've never been a good guitar player. Like I can't do it. Like that's not my thing. Okay. So it's like, yeah, I guess you do kind of flow with what you're good at. Cause if like, you're not good at something, it's mm-hmm. like, you don't have this much fun doing it. Right. You know, unless you, you know, there's this, the natural talent and being able to build on that. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, from day one, like from like six, grade i wanted to like play music and that was like that was it i remember like seeing hootie and the blowfish yeah and just realizing how much fun they had on stage that's what i took back from that show i remember walking away with my dad and being like those guys were having so much fun they looked so happy on stage i want that happiness i want to do that when i met you and you like handed me the burger and Mm -hmm. and and the all the free food you gave me that (laughs) that as we have already discussed has turned into a loyal customer like you seem pretty happy. Yeah, that was a crazy day. I like that stuff. I mean, I like, and that's that's and that's the crazy thing about what you you brought up. It's like I'm able to throw those events because like I worked production for so long, yeah. and I saw, you know, I saw events happening. I worked Bonnaroo. I did this. I worked audio. I I worked for the symphony. So I saw people putting on large events and yep. was a part of them yep. from the behind the scenes. But I also knew what it was like to be on stage. And then when I started like. My, one of my first jobs in Murfreesboro, I worked at Jersey Mike's. So I knew the deli thing. And then I knew, like, I worked at a couple other, like, little restaurants. Worked at Ruby Tuesdays for a while. So mm-hmm. I knew how to bartend and I knew how to serve tables. And so, like, literally the beehive is the culmination of me, like, learning how to do a bunch of shit centered around things I liked. So, so how did you go from the pop-ups to what the beehive is today. And, and you'll have to tell the listeners, viewers, you know, cause like, right. I mean, when I, when I first went, I guess maybe I had heard of it. I certainly had seen the logo. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. brand was, was more omnipresent mm-hmm. than my understanding of what the brand meant. Right. And that's kind of, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. For right? sure. For sure. A, a lot of like people would be like, no, 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 But no, I like that. I like the long game. I like yeah. people like, I'd rather have you sit there and think about it and not know what it is, but think about it for a second yeah. and then find out like a year later, be like, Oh shit. The- Right. I mean, for me, it was years later because my office, exactly. where we're recording it, is mm-hmm. literally, you, I could jog right. from here. You yeah. Know, and I told and, you and earlier, there. right next door is the first, like, when I was first doing the Satan, yeah. like, community food advocates let me keep a freezer there for free. Right. And gave me a key. And that's where I would deliver and keep all the stuff because I didn't have any room to put it. So, so, so maybe let, let's, let's stop for a second and just for the benefit of, of listeners of yours, let's just say, in your words, what is the beehive today? Um, our, our, um, we, we try to make plant-based eating more accessible. Uh Um, so we make foods, vegan foods, um, for restaurants and customers. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's basically vegan meat started off with Satan meats and cheeses. Mm -hmm. Um, we throw events, but like mainly we're like a vegan foods, uh, you know, manufacturer and wholesaler that also sells retail meats to grocery stores and and just to dive into that word accessible yeah that's right? that's that's like our um our mission yeah. our mission is like to make plant-based eating more accessible yeah and, yeah. and when you say accessible like w- what do you mean meaning i can 
Like tofu so to me to is it. not accessible. That's what I. That's what I. Tofu is not to. accessible. Like yeah. I want something because that it's like tofu. it's tofu. Like it's so easy to make tofu taste bad. Right. Right. <laughs> it's right. it's easier to make it taste bad than it is to make it taste good. Yeah. Um, it's it's almost, it's very hard to make right. it taste good. And I good. feel like with you know I feel like a lot of uh, what I've learned is like to get people. So many people are against veganism, or they just don't want to try it, or it's like this like trigger word that they don't like. Yeah, it's like ah whatever. But if you can just throw something at someone and be like, here, eat this, and it looks good, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's like if it's a burger or if it's wings or like this like Italian sandwich or something. They they don't even if it looks good, they'll take it, and that's more accessible. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. if I if I go to a restaurant. Um, and I give them just a wad of seitan that's, uh, that they have to chop and they have to marinate. And then they have to cook and do all this stuff to them. Like, the kitchen doesn't know. Most of the kitchens in normal restaurants, they don't give a shit about vegan food. Right. So they're not going to try. So I've done that before. And then I realized, like, 12 South Taproom was a good example. I would do that. And it would just come out okay. And then I would try to tell them how to do that. And, they would, and it just went away. And I was like, hold on. Let's stop doing that. Here's some slices. They're already marinated. They're exactly what you would do with like a roast beef slice. All you got to do is either put it on a sandwich cold. It's going to taste great. Or throw it on the skillet with some onions and peppers and cheese. And it's going to taste great. Yep. It's like you give it to them ready to where they can't mess it up. Yeah. And then for the consumer, like you were saying, the chorizo, like it's pre-ground. It's pre-marinated. Literally all you have to do is throw that in a skillet with some oil and saute it like anything else you would know. You know, yeah, and that's so you have to realize what people are used to and give them something that they are willing that's easy for them to cook, you yeah. know, and then by doing that, um, you take money away from the industrialized meat industry, mm-hmm. and I think that's uh, that's my main thing is I, I, th- that's my main thing with veganism is that the industrialization of the meat and the dairy industry is like atrocious, it's bad for everything it touches. Yeah. And I think the only way to battle that is by taking the money out of their pockets. Yeah. And you do that by giving them an option to not support that industry. Right. Yes. By good marketing. Yeah. Uh, by, by good marketing, good products. I, when, when I and, say good marketing, I include good products. Right. Like, and like, it's like, also like something like, that the people like. And it meets them. Like. Yeah. And I always say you meet them where they're at. You yeah. have to realize that like the entire world isn't isn't going to go 100% vegan. Yeah. But you can get like, even if you can get a small percentage of it to eat like a small percentage of vegan meals right. every week, right. you're making a big difference. Yeah. And so that's kind of like my, like that's my like political push. That's like my drive. That's like, you know, I could never open up a restaurant or do anything that involved like actually supporting the, the meat industry or anything like that, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so that's just kind of like where, you know, trying to do some good while I just do what I want at the same time. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. So, so how did you move from the, now that we've established what the beehive is, that is, that is what the beehive is. Yeah. Um, let me just say, I, I think, th- I think it's a, I think it's a little bit more, although obviously I'm, I'm probably too small to be considered a market, but one of the things like we started this whole conversation mm-hmm. with is that the, the foods are, um, they are accessible in Whole Foods and Turnip Truck and, yeah. and, and you know, and, and these, these types of stores. That, yeah, but that, I guess that's accessible but where you can go buy them. Right. I'm saying the actual foods and the way they're packaged and they're recreated yes. is accessible in someone that's like easy to, for, to take them, to buy them. Got it. And got it, put, got them, it. put it in their mouth. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. There's little work that you have to do to achieve the goal. In the case of the pepperoni, there's no work. You literally no can work. unwrap it and just, and just eat it. Eat it. Yeah. And it's just exactly like what the other real pepperoni right is. like you throw it on there's a pizza. no difference you literally exactly there's no difference and if you make people work if you make people work harder for it then they don't want to work harder. yeah for of it. course yeah of course why so would you kind of have to take some of that guesswork out of it and put the work in the front end so so let, let's just talk about the transition from the the pop-up right to 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 where you are now so basically how, what how happened was we, we started that pop-up every week and it, like I said, it was a different menu and a different nonprofit each week. Mm-hmm. And it started to get popular. Yep. Um, so we learned a lot of different recipes and we, we built our chops up. And throughout that, we were making our own seitan. And Wild Cow was making our own seitan and we kind of like worked with them. Okay. Um, you what, know, what is seitan? Seitan is like a vital wheat gluten based meat product protein product. If, yeah. You know, if you were to take like all purpose flour, wheat flour mm-hmm. and knead it together with water, you get like a wad 
of dough, like bread, right? Yep. And then if you were to take that and run it underwater and like massage it, you end up like rubbing some of like the carbs and the starch. I, I'm not exactly sure, but you you rub a lot of it out. And now you have this like vital weak, weak gluten protein wad, mm. right? And that is seitan. Mm-hmm. So we don't do that whole process. Yeah. That's just way but that's too what much. it is. I, but I think a lot can, of people don't know what it is. Right, but you can buy that flour that's just vital wheat gluten. So okay. it's like a really dense, high protein flour that you mix with water and liquid soy sauce and spices, and then you get this like dense kind of bread that's high protein, low carb, low fat. Mm-hmm. And so when you add different things, different spices, you can add beans, you can add like sun dried tomatoes, anything you could you you mess with the texture and everything else so you can get like a very specific product okay but like at its at its core like seitan is like vital weak gluten liquid and spices then you wad it you cut it you boil it you steam it you cook it and that's that's what you get yeah yeah um so we started making seitan and i do remember like we had loyal customers and people would be like, I would buy this Satan. We started to get really good at it. I would buy this. You need to do this. So like it kind of just like triggered something Got in it. my head. Okay. Okay. And I thought about it. I was like, okay, yeah, we're doing this. You know, it's like, cause really just the pop-up started like, I want to do something cool. Like yep. we'll see where it goes. Who knows? Maybe I'll start a restaurant. Like just let it go. Yep. And so we did that for a year and a half. And then like, it was kind of crazy. I was touring a lot. I was touring that whole time. I would leave on Thursday, Friday, play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come back, shop Monday, throw an event Tuesday, leave again Thursday. Wow. Um, and so, so we would, so basically after a year and a half, we were kind of like, okay, this is a lot. We're going to stop. My partners were like, we don't, they were, we were like moving along to do, oh, we were going to rent a spot in five points and that fell through. We were going to open up like a, like, like a, a storefront, like, like, like a, a retail- storefront. We were going to say it was a green wagon okay. where like, um, the vape shop is, but yeah. now it's like taken over by someone else. Yeah. We were going to rent that. And we actually like, we're like real, I gave him a call. I was like, we're going to do this. And basically that fell through last minute. And so we stopped doing the events and I was like, well, I don't want to stop this. Like we have a little bit of money in the bank account and the partners didn't really, know. I was like, I can't throw these events by myself. This is like, and I was like, all right, well, screw it. I'm going to, I'm going to start a late, I'm going to start making Satan. And I started using a friend's kitchen right on Porter road, like cons dessert. She's not there anymore. And I would go in there like, you know, I had Nick teach me kind of how to make the Satan cause he was always the Satan guy. Okay. And I made it and I would go in there like, still touring on Mondays when they closed and work till like three, four in the morning and make Satan once a week, once every other week and store it at, um, the community, community food, food advocates. advocates yeah. And I, I made the first labels by myself. I have like a little bit of graphic design skills. I'm not that good, but like I did all the graphic design until like a couple years ago and I figured out how to do the labels and I got the department of ag certification and I just had two products and wads. I had the fillets and the chorizo and I had blocks and I just, you know, I went, my first customer, and this was all you at this, this point. Like, this like, was like, all like, like, me. Like now it this has was still down me. to Ben. I was the only, doing, yeah. and, and you called it beehive. Yeah. I still kept it the beehive. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. But, it, but it was one person. It was, it was me. And, and one person who's also still touring. I was still touring at that time. Yeah. yeah. And we were weekend warrior stuff. And there were sometimes we'd be gone during the week. I would just be like, I would just modify my schedule to go on in a different day through the night to, uh-huh. to cook. Um, cause that the whole thing, my, the entire business started with like less than a thousand dollars on a credit card. 300 of that was like the business license. Yeah. And then to get the groceries for the first event and the flyers and that's what, how it started. Wow. And like, I haven't taken money until like a month ago. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm um, sure that's for, that's for fulfillment. That's for, no, that's for building out a production facility, which I guess we'll get to, but like, um, (laughs) um, and so, yeah, that was all me. I would deliver it myself. I did everything. And it just literally, that, and that was like six years ago. It, it's, the entire thing has grown super organically. Oh, what I was saying was that it grew, I used other people's spaces the entire time. Yeah. Until like four years ago. Yeah. And just used someone else's space. And I would give cons desserts, like I would give her a strong discount on, you know, basically like I would almost give it to her for free. Or I mean, really basically cheap. the same stuff you were doing when you were just bartering. It's staying it's in people's same, homes. Fucking, it's the same, same stuff. Like, you know, just how do we do this? It's bartering and it's like that punk rock attitude of just like, I'm just going to do this yep. and see what happens. Yep. 
And so my first customer was Baja Burrito and Troy, who's an oh. awesome dude. You know Baja yeah, Burrito? Yeah, of course, of yeah, course. They're awesome, staple. Yeah. And I was always like, Baja Burrito needs this. And I, I realized there was like a hole in the market. Like there was like West Soy Satan and like Upton's. And Upton's is cool, but West Soy is like horrible. Yeah. And none of it was like marinated. And it's just like, I could do this better, just make it really easy. Um, and I went, into, I went into Baja and I was like, hey, like we knew each other. I was like, you should try this. And he's like, okay. And he literally took the package from me, opened it up, ate it raw. I mean, it's cooked, but like, yeah, it's not yeah, hot. Yeah, but it's not like prepared, ate it out of the yeah. bag. And he's like, that's good. I've been thinking about that. I'll take 60 pounds. I was like, what are you kidding me? And he was my first customer. It's never been that easy. It's never been that easy, <laughs> but he just picked it up like that straight up. Wow. And, um, yeah. And then I worked on turnip truck cause I knew them too. It's just like, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. able to talk to people and I know people. So it's like, but yeah, I got Philip finally to, he like, it took a couple months, but like, he started taking it. It was like super slow. And now, like you said, they're just flying through it. And yeah. And then literally it just, it just slowly grew from there. It was me by myself. And then I had, I would hire someone to come in just like for a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, just like come help me sometimes. Yeah. And then eventually I got tired of that space cause it was too small and it was someone else's spaces space. And I got, um, cook, went to cook's kitchen. Yep. I rented out a space. It was like 400, 500 bucks a month. Um, and I would go in there either by myself or I started to have someone come in with me and me and Gavin, who's with me today, he, we would, we would go in once a week at like one or 2 PM because we didn't like to be around everyone. Just like, it's pretty dirty and messy. Mm -hmm. We would go in and we work till two in the morning, three in the morning, um, and just make seitan and store it. And then I would deliver it. And I was, I think, well, at that, I don't know if I was touring then kind of like dwindled down after that, but I was still playing music, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And then, then it just like from there, I got sick of that place for two years, someone else's space. And I rented this space, um, where I'm at right now. Yeah. And I didn't have, I was terrified of being able to spend like $2,000 a month on rent. And I was like, okay, how do I do this? So what I did was, and I only needed two or three days, but I wanted my own space. And so I rented out the kitchen to other people to be able to like make the ends meet. So yep. there were a couple months where I didn't pay rent there, which was awesome. But it, dealing with other people in your kitchen kind of sucks and this and that. Yeah. So now, and then eventually uh, like that got them out and I need the space. And now it's yeah. seven days a week and we have like one night shift. So before we get into the, the growth of the business, this mm -hmm. new facility you're going to tell, tell me about. Yeah. Let's just talk about the weekend, like restaurant. The weekend deli. Yeah, the weekend deli. So that was the thing too. That was that which was is, something that just so happened. Dope. Like I was, I never thought about doing that. But uh, like, dude, the 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 breakfast burrito is like, yeah, like that uh, shit is just life. The breakfast burrito. So it's good. it's really good. You, we're gonna have like a whole breakfast menu when it opens up. We're gonna have like a English muffin, like a bacon egg and cheese, and sausage. Oh, you were cheese. or you're going we're to? We're going to. Oh, really? When we open up, we're about to open up the deli every day. Oh, what? Yeah, for, I guess we'll get to that, dude. But like the, <laughs> but the thing is, oh, like, shit. <laughs> there goes my fasting schedule. Right. Yeah, it's dangerous. But there's no break. There's no vegan breakfast in town. No. There's the, the Falcon. Southern yeah, Southern V. But they they have no. They only do breakfast on weekends. Yeah. I, well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like during the week. Right. And the, the Falcon does Falcon's it. Falcon's right by my house. Right. I know so the Falcon. They're, they're awesome. Yeah. yeah. Angela and yep. Alexis are awesome. And then um, Sunflower Bakehouse, they do it. Yeah, they're they're on, out on Lebanon though, right? Yeah, that's like far. It's yeah, it's it's in Donaldson, yeah, and they're all it, gluten free. It's, I mean, that it's, biscuit, it's far enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no one's gonna do it like we do. It's uh, yeah. yeah, no. So, but it's basically, the, the way the deli happened was, I like I had I hired like basically a culinary director. I started working with Diana, who um, is the culinary director, and. We were just like, I want all these different products. Let's do pepperoni and bacon and this and that. And then she started doing that. And then we were like, we should open up a one day a week deli. Like that'd be tight, right? Like using all these products that we, it was just an idea that we had. Yeah. Um, and we started it one day a week. And then we started doing two days a week because it's like, all right, well, my, we make some money doing this and like, let's do it Sunday. We're not using the kitchen on Sunday. And so that's how that started. Um, which is basically, it's awesome. It's back to like our pop-up method. Yeah. It started as a pop-up. And, and the reason why I went to the, the spot at the East room was because it was attached to a venue and I was like, Oh, I can have these kitchen, he this kitchen here, but then I can also throw an event once a month. Mm -hmm. So like for two years, I threw basically a pop-up at the East room once a month. We started off with the buffets. That was cool. It worked. But then I was like, nah, let's, let's do a la carte. 
So we made more money. It was way easier on the kitchen because you don't understand how many people, how much people eat when it's a buffet. They eat so much. Yeah, I mean, and, and also like of this kind of food, I feel like people right. just feel like oh, they can't get enough of it. And they don't know what the next time they're right. going to have it is. You know what I mean? And yeah. So there's like, and the crazy thing is when I learned about. So one of the biggest things I learned, and one of the greatest things about the buffet at the Wild Cow, was people would come in there skeptical, right? So like two vegan dudes, and then their friends are just my friends, and right. they they come in and be like, "All right, well, I'll, I'll give this a shot, Ben." And so it'd be funny because they would go up to the buffet line, everything looks and smells great, and then they'll kind of like pick a little bit of each and put it on a plate, right? Just because they're like, I don't know. And then they sit down and they're like, oh, well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Then they'll go back and they'll load it up for yeah. a second and they'll get a big plate and then they'll go back for a third time. Right. And the best part about it was like, there's a couple people that like after it was done, they would be like, there's a, there's something that clicked in their brain right? where they're like, I just ate a full vegan meal. It was delicious. Right. I feel stuffed. And I also don't feel like I'm going to die right now. Yeah. Because if you were going to eat that much meat or if you went to like Golden Corral or whatever, you would want to go take a nap. Right. But they, so basically what clicked was that like, wait, I feel good. I ate all this stuff. It tasted good. Eating vegan is possible. Yep. And so... And so that was like just a learning mechanism for them and meeting people where they're at. It's like, yep. it's, it's a, this is indulgent. Yep. Like this is not the most healthy food, but it's vegan. Yes. And you can eat as much as you want of right. it. And like, you'll learn something a little bit. Yeah. And which, which, which is actually the thing people are most afraid of when you start talking about switching up their diet. I'm going to be hungry all the time. Right. Well, no, I, I was going to say that the bigger thing is. Yeah, okay, let's just say four to five days out of the week I eat just for fuel. Almost nobody does, right? right. But, like, am I going to lose the part of my life where I eat for pleasure? Right? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, like, am I, yeah, go am yeah, I going yeah. to have to give that up yeah. to do this thing? Exactly. Like, and that's a, that's a big problem for right. most of us. It mm -hmm. was a big problem for me. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like... I want to eat um, a burger yeah. or a steak or something. You know, it's like fried chicken. <laughs> so so th this is probably a good a good time for me to kind of commend you for something that I take issue with when it comes to like vegans, right? Yeah. Which, you know, I mean, I suppose I am now because this is the way I, this is the way I eat. Right. But it's just the way you eat. It's not like who you are. Well, it might be who I am on the inside, but let, yeah. me, just, let me just, let me, okay. let me, let me say the thing I want to say, right. Is at the end of the day, like I, I love humans, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. And I think humans have a capacity to do a lot of good. We do a lot of bad, yeah. Right? We do a lot of bad, but that. But I don't. I haven't like written us off as like we're no. destined to like do bad. Well, I mean, I, I think we're destined to do good. Like, I mean, this that's, is this is we live in chaos and everything works pretty much that's in harmony. Kind of you know my, what I'm saying? This is my point, right? And it's like if you care about humans, and th by the way, it, it's it's not like. Either or. You can care about humans and care about animals or care about humans and care about the, yeah, the greater sure. environment. Yeah, like yeah, you can yeah. care about both, right? Mm -hmm. But I do think that if you care about humans and you know ultimately that they'll be healthier, happier, you know, um, if they do embrace eating more of a plant-based life, even yeah. if it's not, you know, entirely 100%. Doing it in a way that they can actually adopt it, right. right? Where it's not, you know, where you're anticipating their defenses totally. are going to be up, and mm -hmm. you're, and you're, it's an offering to them, and yeah. it's something they can be really happy about and feel relieved about. Like those are all the issues, right? Right. That Accessibility. We, that we have to, yeah, exactly. And like you've done something that, in no way, uh, communicates any blame shame guilt no. it's like no we're neutral you know and what i mean stay neutral the entire time yeah and i just think that's dope you know what i mean Thank like you. like i appreciate I, I, you i, I think that's great that yeah and, and, and i think we have a we have a real issue in the world right now regardless of the issue mm -hmm. of people missing that point right missing the point that whatever it is you're trying to get other people to do yeah they're human and well, like you got to figure out What's going to make a human right and actually the, change their behavior? And the first, the first thing to guarantee that you're not going to get them to change or listen to you is to like a lot, make them become defensive or to like take a stance and tell you that you're doing something exactly. wrong. If there's any aggressiveness or right. any of that, right. then they'll they'll instantly get defensive, right? But if yes. I like come here and we like have a conversation, and it's totally cool, and I meet you where you're at. Like you'll you might listen to me. That's right. You know. <laughs> But that's if right. I'm shaming you for eating meat, you're going to be like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, that's no, right. Even if you were like second guessing it, you're, you're going to get defensive. That's right. 
And a, and, a, and a open conversation can't happen when you're defensive. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, right. that happens in politics. That happens in everyday life, everything. It's like once you choose a side, the other side is wrong. Yes. So why choose sides? Right. Yeah. I'll come offering something. Right. You know? Or just like be open. And be open. You just got to be open knowing that if you're going to have this conversation with somebody that like they need to be you need to allow them to tell you how they feel yeah. and you're not going to judge them about it totally because like no matter what whether you're like in any extreme like you believe a certain thing because your experiences yes and that doesn't mean and even if like i disagree with you like your feelings and your thoughts are valid yes totally you know and i and i you know if you want to change something you just got to like what's going to have the greatest result Okay, I just wanted to say that yeah. I think well, like what you're doing in terms of philosophically right. is dope. And I appreciate it's that. It's really I, dope. I think, thank you. I think that's, um, especially in the vegan world, you know, because if you tell someone something's vegan, vegans get a bad rap because of like PETA and there's a lot of shaming oh, dude. and there's and that. And, you know, everyone gets defensive. So it's like, I, I want to be as far away as that as possible because that's not my goal. My goal isn't to make people feel bad. My goal is to like, get them to eat something a little bit different and like make a difference or right. care about something. I, I'm, I'm not an insecure person, so right. I don't mind. But and most I, people and, are. And, and, and I also have, have done a lot of work to be in observation of my emotions. So even if somebody says something and my emotions like stir up, I'm more observing it than like yeah. writing it. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? But I will say like, yeah, it's been the most predictable thing in the world that as I've become plant-based, you know, and, it, it, you can't keep it from people. It's no. a, you know, so you might as well just talk about it because it's right. an inevitability. You're exactly. going to eat with people. You know, you know, you're going to go out and, and you have to yeah. kind of you know communicate that this is the way that I eat. Exactly, you know, dude. People's own responses to that that have nothing to do with me. Right. Ultimately, I know that. But but you know, usually people, there, people, th- there is a response. Oh, there's often. definitely a response. There's a response. They get defensive even if you're not even talking to them about it. You just be like, oh well, I don't eat that. And their response would be like, oh, well, I eat meat because of this and this and this. You don't even yeah. have to be giving them yeah. shit about it. It's just though they, they feel the, compelled. The, there is there is often a to response. tell you now, why. Now some people are like, oh man, that's really interesting. Tell me more about that. I've yeah, been, I've been interested in that. It's not 100 percent defensive. Yeah, but there are certainly those cases where, you know, I can, I can, I can just know something about food is a trigger for this person. Right. You know right. what I mean? And well, I mean, everyone eats and everyone loves to eat. Yeah. And, I, and that's what I love about food is it brings people together and yeah. you're allowed a lot of, you can have like a conversation at the table, you know, yes. music and food bring people together. Yes. Um, and it is, it's definitely really interesting. Um, your approach is dope. Okay. Okay. We, we can, we, we can carry on. Where but, were but, we but, at but I, on I, the I last did want, I did want, I did want to say that because I, the approach is everything. The approach is everything. The approach is everything. The approach is everything. Yeah. You know? And I learned that like running the business too. It's like, how do you get the result? It's like, cause if you just scold someone for doing something, they're going to, but like, Hey, let me show you how to do this. Right. And this, you know, it's like, how do you get them? And, and everyone's, you know, different. How do you get them to like, listen and be open? Yeah, exactly. You exactly. Know? And, and if you're not taking the pleasure away, which your products are basically... Yeah, well, you're giving them the pleasure giving back. Giving them the yeah. pleasure. You're, you you're, know. You're, you're saying, hey, you know, this thing delivers on what you're looking for. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the thing we, you're really looking for, un, un, unless you are explicitly saying, I want to eat an animal, and it's not about the taste. It's about, right. I want to eat an animal. Right. right? Like, un, unless that's what you're saying, and some people do say that. But some, some people like that. Some, some, some people want some that. Some people yeah. want that, yeah. But if for most people, they're saying, I want the texture, I want the taste, I want the, right. the dopamine hit I get, mm-hmm. I want, you know what I mean? I want, well, they're not saying that, but it's what they're feeling, right? right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, that's what I want. Exactly. I, I want wanted... those things. And it's like, you're saying, and I got that for you. Here it is. Yeah, exactly. It is. Which and is this will just wake really you up dope. And, yeah, and it just gets you to think about it on your own, because you can't tell someone what to think. You got to ingrain something in them so they can have their own thoughts about it. Right, right. Dope. Okay, let's talk about, like, the growth of... Let's talk about the growth of yeah. your of your brand. And one of the things that that I uh, w- before we started recording, I was telling you about uh, how I've gotten serious about sports and, and martial arts in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I have a nutritionist who's a plant based n- nutritionist. Yeah, and um, which is awesome because it, it's which, going there. Yeah, which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, game changers and all this other exactly. kind of stuff, right? Um, and people always ask me like, did you do it because of game changers? It's funny because like I didn't. But it came after you. It came after. It came yeah. out after. But I did it at an event because I went to an event 
last summer mm-hmm. and I was hanging out with Derek Morgan at the event. Oh, so you know right? Charity too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I was at the bar with the two of them yeah. where they were getting ready to do this whole thing yeah. uh, about it. And, uh, and everything that sort of happened at that event that was about uh, – you know the environment and totally. and the impact on the environment that you yeah. can, that you can make as an individual. What are the big things you can do? Right. You know, procreation, flying in airplanes, mm-hmm. and basically eating plant based were like the three big things. If you yeah. wanted to make really, yeah, if you wanted to make an impact on the mm-hmm. environment, and that was like the big change for me. And then I did the interview with Derek the day before Game Changers came out. Oh, really? And so everyone, the timing was so close yeah. to it hitting that mm-hmm. everyone has been like, hey, we know it was Game Changers. But it right. wasn't. It was, it was actually just... Right. Did you even know about it? I, he I, obviously knew about no, it. No, I didn't know. Yeah. Until the interview. Like, he t- he told me about it in the interview. Like, Crazy. I'm, I'm executive producing this new movie, Game Changers, that's, 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 that's like coming out. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's... What caused him to do it? So, for him, I think... I think if I remember correctly, basically, he was struggling with inflammation. He was struggling mm-hmm. with cholesterol. You know, it was it was it was performance and blood work based for yeah. him, is is my understanding. And and and, and then like him and, and Charity just came up with 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 some some research that sort of pointed them in right, that direction. Yeah. She's an incredible chef. Yeah, she's awesome. And and I think you know she just very quickly started making these really good meals and then he did and he was feeling better like sort of anecdotally just like feeling better but then right. he did blood work and he was like holy shit oh like, yeah everything that was problematic yeah, it's crazy. was basically gone yeah. right and so um that's that's what i think okay. it was for him yeah that's, for, that's for me it was environment first then then health and then and then it was just like right. and then i get like this benefit of clear conscious for right. all the other stuff which is really kind of well nice. once you start looking into you know what the industrialization of the meat industry once you start looking into that right there's like no going back. it's problematic on a bunch oh of, my god it, it's, it's challenging on a bunch of levels um well the problematic is still fine yeah I like know, i mean it's, it's like it's, you know it's what, challenging it's, it's like 15 percent of like the all like carbon dioxide yeah it, 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 exactly the exactly industry, exactly and the food that makes it and all that stuff it's 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 horrible and yeah, it makes the, us the, sick the numbers too. are very very tough and everything yeah the, the, the numbers oh, yeah. are really really tough Real once tough. you once you start to i mean um, the amazon into rainforest yeah like hold that, on, hold that, on. And, and i'm at this event with um with suzanne who th- this event was called nexus and so it was a bunch of different oh, yeah, yeah, uh yeah. you know like uh philanthropists and stuff like that mm-hmm. and, and philanthropists but more, probably more important than the philanthropist was like all these people leading these incredible you know social enterprises right yeah and so like the, on the the very first person who i met was uh the ceo of the rainforest foundation oh crazy yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. so like so these are the people who i'm meeting and i'm just like Oh shit! You're like running. She's like, yeah. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you how this is working and yeah. like how screwed we are. That's you awesome. Know? Yeah. And um and so yeah, I was kind of shaken from from it changed from, once from you those once, three yeah, days. once those eyes are open, it's hard to really if, if unless yeah. you have a conscious you yeah. Know, it's it's like, it, oh, it's very it's hard. hard to go back. And I've got and, kids, and you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I you know I want them to have this awesome future, and it's it's some scary stuff. You yeah, know? for sure. So okay, um. The, the where I was going because we got into the Derek yeah, d- game changer thing, but, but I was talking about um my nutritionist and how she had she put together these game plans for me like you know because yeah. because I want to train but I'm also a professional and I've got like travel days and blah 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 totally, so I had yeah. to like figure out you know how can I actually eat but eat in a way that's going to support my athletic goals totally. right you know, I want to I want to lift weights I need to have enough energy I'm doing these these really hard workouts blah yeah, blah blah for sure and so and and I told her I said I am totally cool with 70% of the things I eat being the same five days a week. Like the weekends, I got to have some variety. It's just, yeah. it's the weekend. Mm-hmm. But like Monday through Friday, basically, I can eat the same thing right. all the time. I need to be able to do, do dinner with my wife, and she's not going to be down for that. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. me, if it's just me and I'm just feeding myself the same thing, and the staple meal is the spinach chorizo bowl, yeah, which the chorizo, so awesome. which is the beehive chorizo. So yeah. I was like, oh, that's dope because I know Ben. I had, yeah. you know, I've already eaten this stuff. And she I know told you about it, or oh, you no. already knew about it. No, or you it, brought it in. Well, I, I, no, no, she put it in the plan without me saying oh, I like really? beehive stuff. So, no shit. so this was her recommendation. It was just in the plan. So I was like, that's dope because I know about that stuff. I know where to eat. I actually hadn't had the chorizo. I had everything else but that. Oh yeah, that was that's the OG. Oh, dude, so good. So then, like I told you, I start. Uh, I, I bought a couple and then like, you know, I'm, I'm really needing to stock up because, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm leading up to my match and I got to like eat really well. Totally. 
And I go to, and I'm like, okay, I go on the website. I'm like, where can I buy it? Cause it's the middle of the week. Deli's not open. Yeah. And I go to turnip truck. It's not there. Mm. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I, get, I get back in my car. I go to Whole Foods. It's not there. And I call Lexi and I'm really? like, like, dude, it first was not, time. I, I call Lexi That's and I say, annoying. I got to like, what's an alternative? You know, yeah. we, 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 and we got like some bullshit that's in like the frozen section. You get my section. number after this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, man. You but like, walk up you know, I got anytime. some bullshit, you know, yeah. like th- that was terrible. Didn't taste right. good. Texture was bad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, it's fine because it's fuel, but it's not good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's ruining my, the meal that I'm saying I'm going to do every day. Totally. Yeah. That's and not a good way to start off. Yeah. Doing an everyday meal. So, so you are at this point where. Here's my point. I'm, I'm giving you a testimonial. You're yeah. at this point where plant-based, sports-oriented nutritionists are recommending the food yeah. as a staple. That's cr- yeah, and which then, is crazy. And then when the, their clients go to get the food, they can't fucking get it because <laughs> it's sold out, dude. So let's talk about your growth like plans. Good and, is, and bad problems. Yeah, this is a good time to talk about how you're going to make sure that doesn't happen for me yeah. anymore. <laughs> Outside of having your text, you, you know, the ability to text you, which I appreciate. Yeah. But like, but like seriously, like. It's going well, man. It's, it's going, going it's, well. It's Every going time I well. go into the beehive yeah. in the weekends, it's, it's packed. It's packed. This last weekend was yeah. packed. Yeah, like, things yeah. are going well. So let's talk about the growth now. So basically, we're um, we're opening up a new production facility. I basically we're in like a th- thousand or less than thousand square foot place. Like where you walk into the deli, yeah. that's what we do our deli in. Yeah, and we probably ship out like a thousand plus pounds of product a week, wow. just wholesale wow. and retail. Wow. And that's, you know, and then we do the deli, which is busy. Fi- you know, we only do it five hours a day on the weekends, but so it's like that place is maxed out. And I have like, you know, we rent space over there and pop like for all our whole food stock for the filet and the chorizo. And we have like 30 freezers somewhere else just because we can't store our product there. And mm-hmm. if, you know, I'm kind of holding off on trying to grow and reaching out to people because I just don't have the ability to grow. Yeah, right. I don't have the space. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, I need something. I need to move. So um, we just signed at least on a like a 7,500 foot production facility. That's and awesome. I took out a loan, first time ever. Um, but it wasn't an investor. It was just like straight with the bank. Straight with the bank, yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm building out that facility. And then in tandem, once I get that up and running, um, we're going to open up the deli like six days a week and include, it's going to have a uh, breakfast menu. So we're going to do the like breakfast sauce. We're going to do a breakfast crunch wrap and like two English Dude. muffins. There's going to be a, like a French toast fried chicken mu- English muffin. And then we're going to do our regular sandwiches and we're going to have a fried chicken menu. So we'll have like four different fried chicken sandwiches and stuff. So it's maybe not the most healthy thing sometimes, but like it, it serves a need and it's like makes things more accessible. It's cool. You know? It's right off the street from the Y. So I can like just stop exactly. off, yeah, 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 eat, yeah, yeah. and then go run my three and miles And your nutritionist is saying like, you know, just don't get the fried stuff. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Oh, um, dude, that's amazing. So we're doing that. And yeah, and what's, I'm what's, working what's, on distribution what's the, what's the and stuff. What's the timing on that? Like, I'm, I mean, you know, it's a process, obviously. Spring. Right? spring. I mean, yeah, I'm hoping like March, April. So, so does that mean like in the spring your your production will start to ramp yeah. like t- to that mm-hmm. to that level what, what, I'm so if, you, if you're so. doing a thousand pounds a week now what, like where I'm, will I'm you trying be? to le- I'm trying to at least quadruple things wow yeah because I mean that's I have dope. I have a production uh like a distribution company in New York that's trying to like let me take over their distribution in the city uh and just that whole area yeah. and I'm talking to uh, other companies that like like national companies that are hopefully like I'll have you know regional distribution that they have they have national distribution so once i get in somewhere and it works then like this company will be able to like push me out nationally hopefully because right now i'm just shipping everything like myself yeah but 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 you're also not just in in tennessee right oh no we've got like four or five places in new york and like north carolina yeah Asheville, oregon a couple places in denver We've had like three or four places in LA hit us up the last couple of weeks. That's amazing. Yeah, New That's Jersey. Amazing. It's all over the place right now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And, and 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 the other thing that I've noticed, which I think is definitely playing in your favor, is not just spots like Wild Cow that are basically 100 percent vegetarian, right? But more and more, you know, it's it's just pretty easy if you decide you want to be plant based today, and mm-hmm. you are a person of uh, of of mean of means yeah. like like if 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 money is not the issue right and we're, yeah. we're you know money is not the issue dude every place I mean we're talking about KFC you know just oh just yeah add, like, Be, like like beyond every place is adding these mm-hmm. these options right and that's an interesting menu. thing how do you feel about that so if you're I, 
Do so, so I, I mean, I go back to, I, I go back to, to what I just said about humans, right? You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, um, you know, I expect big corporations to do what big corporations do. They're okay? going to, you know no matter what. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't expect big corporations to somehow be 100% altruistic. That's not what I expect. Mm-hmm. But if, for, for, for the great many Americans who like fast food, right. You know, they live in food deserts or, or because of their financial situation, fast food is a large part of their diet to have access to the experience of something. Yeah. Right. That is um, that that is plant based. And for them to see that the taste and the texture and the and the and the seasoning and the yeah. preparation can be so similar to what they already have experienced to be able to to um make that experience really, really accessible to right. me is fantastic. It is fantastic. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I think that's so good. Yeah, I, th- you t- I think you took it to the other side where you're like the customer. You're giving the customer and those people That's like, who options. I care about. Right, yeah. That's who I care about. Yeah, I for ca- sure. You know, like like my what I do day to day is I work in the healthcare industry, man. And like right. chronic health is like such it's a, a huge massive, thing. massive issue. Right. And, and so, so that's, much of it is mm-hmm. like people like – we're demonizing people around their lifestyles, but like the civic design and their access to good food and their access to education right. about good food. Mm-hmm. It's like we're killing, pe- we're forcing people to make bad decisions. Literally. You know what I mean? By the way we're designing things, by what we give them access mm-hmm. to, by by how we educate them. So, yeah, I think this is fantastic it is man. great yeah. i think it's I great agree. yeah for sure you know so I, how I, do you feel about the industries and all that other kind of stuff i look it's big money big money i big i've been around enough big, big money to yeah. know what big money is really about you know yeah. what i mean and I, it's about big money it's about big money so you just got to kind of i i'm beyond sort of de- demonizing that because i've i've been so close to it now well, long it's so enough. hard to change yeah, right exactly and the only way to change exactly. it is by like giving but them the less reality, money. But the reality is that they care about money. They care, they about, care money. about money. And, and that's where it's at. they will change if, if they the lo- money is threatened. Mm-hmm. They will change. Yeah. So, so like that's the way to exactly. create change. That's the only way to, that's co- the way to create change. That's the only way. Politically that's the way to anything change. is the only way create to do it. Create a better product. Money. Create a better service. Yeah. Market better. Like that's the way to change right. the world. It's the reality. People, you know, capitalism is the, is the world's language. Absolutely. That is the world's language. Mm-hmm. That's how humans actually are going to change the world is through capitalism. Only I, through, I hate to say only, it. It is. Well, because that's the way we're, that's what we are in right now. Yes. So the only way to battle it is by that. That's exactly right. You know? And that's it's a, like you can you can protest and you, you can have. like post and you can do whatever you want. But if you go and you buy oil and you buy this, all that, it's like they don't care what you say that's because you're right. giving them money. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So how do you feel about, since you're in the healthcare industry, yeah. how do you feel about how most doctors don't even care about what you eat or ask what you eat They're about their diet? They're not trained on it. Right. So it's more so, of like an, so in a, like an education thing? It, it, it's... They're not trained on it. They go through med school and they're not trained on nutrition. They're just trained they, on drugs, right? They're not even really trained on drugs. They're trained on biology. Hmm. Right? Yeah. And viruses and things like that. They know about acute care and they know how to, like, symptoms... And right. They know about diseases. They don't know about health. It's in- that's interesting, right? Yeah. Like, aren't they health professionals? Yeah. And the education system is what produces all the doctors. Right. So it's like you know you got to get back to the root cause yeah, of, yeah, of yeah, all yeah, this yeah. stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You know, for I sure. Mean, by the way, this is the same thing in politics. Like a lot of the political issues start in the law schools. Yeah. <laughs> and so because, it's just... because, because who makes the laws? Right. Lawyers. And like, where do we graduate lawyers from? Law schools. And where do we establish mm. what is? Where so do we establish always the comes principles back to, to education. argue? Yeah, it, dude, it always comes back to education, mm-hmm. right? And like, so it's the democratiz- it's the democratization of education, and how people like you and I have been able to make a living because we sort of short circuited all that shit. We're yeah. both dropouts, right? Yeah, we short circuited all that dropout. shit. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Because we we knew like capitalism didn't actually require that. Right, it just required you to create you value, do what you want, and also it's like <laughs> yeah. you work, you get something done. Like if you, yeah, right. You, you just, just required just you to do it. Just, just do, do it. it. Just do just it. Just do it. Right. I, I learned so much more from just like getting a job and doing what I wanted to yes. do and having actual experience and just watching things yes. rather than just sitting in a class. But we're not the, we're not the majority, right? The majority of people are still in the system where 
they have to go to really not necessarily to be educated but get a credential but the unfortunate side effect just like taking a, a pharmaceutical drug right mm -hmm. it's like yeah it'll do this for you but the side effects are dizziness nausea right. you might die mm -hmm. right the side effects of education are you get indoctrinated with a bunch of bullshit all too often right yes. you know what i mean and mm -hmm. like it's really bad when it's important people in our society like doctors and lawyers so like if you're you know if you're talking about mm -hmm. why the Look, dude, doctors are some of the most unhealthy people in the, Is that in, crazy? In, in the world. For sure. Dude, they, they used to smoke cigarettes in the doctor's oh, offices, yeah. right? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, this is by design. The, like, the, the, That's, and, and who's funding these schools? These, the industry. The, what, like the, like the pharmaceutical industry and everything else? All these industries. Yeah. All oh, yeah. these industries. Just they, just money. They, they just know. care about money. Dude, yes. Yes. They yeah, are that's... funding. They're funding all these schools. Mm -hmm. So like I, I feel like that's for me, that's why I just I care about individual people. You know what I mean? I care about individual people and I want individual people to have access to information, access to opportunity, access to experiences. Right. Because I believe people like if given those things, it's a better than fifty percent chance they're gonna do you know, right, they're, they're going to head in the right direction. When right. we see people not doing it, it's because more often than not, like they don't have. And I guess they, you have they don't to, have options. Yeah, and you have to start small and with the individual to actually create the big change. Totally. The only problem is sometimes when you think about it, it's like climate change or the big picture is like, like, I'm. I, it's just a controversial thing. Yeah. But it's like basically, of course, I believe that it's like the individual has the power and that will create change. But yeah. the thing that sucks is when you think of the look at the big picture is like the only way you're really going to get big changes if the corporations and the big money actually changes. That's right. So it, it has to start from the individual. But like if the corporations don't change, then like in some ways the individual's like actions are null and void because it's like, you know, climate change and everything is only, it's not based off if I compost or if I personally eat. Right. Right. And, and so this is a dilemma I have with myself because like, of course, I believe this and I want to believe this and I think it's like everyone but the problem is how do you battle the bigger yeah. issue okay so let's circle back to the beyond stuff right why are they doing that because of money okay right. and, and so, so, so yeah so then that's proof that something is changing I agree with you right it, yeah that's yeah. proof something mm -hmm. is changing because they wouldn't do it they wouldn't do it if they didn't see the money involved with they it. would they, yeah they wouldn't do it same with like Tyson making yeah. a vegan protein right it's it's either a hedge mm -hmm. right or they're playing offense and if they think the faster they get there, they'll have some future opportunity. Regardless, yeah, it's to the good, right? You know, what I'm saying? something in some dynamic in the market mm -hmm. is making them say we have to take this action, right. and then they take the action, and then you start hearing like all these crazy milestones about how how much of it they're selling, right? Right, and that's only going to make that's them sell only going to make them have to sell more and more yeah. and more. And so, yeah, you know what I mean? Like this, to me, something's happening. Oh, definitely, something definitely something. It's definitely something is yeah, happening. The growth yeah. of your business. Yeah, right. I mean, all of it's happening, and I think, it, with, you know, with everything that's going on in the world today, it's like people's eyes are opening up. You yes. know, because it, there's been forced to open up. You yeah. like can't not see things. And there's multiple now. There's multiple access points, mm -hmm. right? And what I mean by that is there's multiple reasons. So, like, in the in the plant based universe, there are some people who like, you know, and and actually, I think for for very good reason, you know, are just dead set against the you know the the treatment of animals right you know what i mean like that oh, is yeah. like that is the reason but now like if that wasn't your reason mm -hmm. we got some other reasons there's definitely some other <laughs> you reasons. know what i'm saying yeah. we got some other reasons it's climate there's like the, health, the hormones dude. health like, like yeah you know like for the food real. source yeah. yeah yeah exactly so like you know there's there's multiple angles which only means it becomes more inclusive. It's right. like, so you know, now you have it's the now a convergence point you have, yeah. for us as opposed to, which I it's think it's just this thing for, for people who, yeah, no, no, no. I, you I follow what I'm saying. Yeah, I totally follow you. And so, yeah. So more people can get on board because they're coming from different angles and they have different passions, which is a it, good thing, which is totally a good thing, <laughs> which is a good thing. Yeah. Right. And, and it's we care also about a little bit more validating too. Here, yeah. It's a good thing. Yes. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. It's the whole thing, how it just, it's all about, a lot of it comes down to just like, I don't know, a lot of it comes down to climate. A lot of it, a lot comes, of it and, comes down to climate. And like the health, it, health of just everything, the earth and the people and everything involved, you know? Yeah. You know, the weird thing about the climate thing is I'm not a betting person. I don't gamble. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if you want to talk about... um a bet I would not want to be on the wrong side of. 
it's climate. Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Which is, which boggles my mind how some people aren't like, that's, that's the thing for me is like, is like, okay, there's not a single individual human. I think that can make a strong enough case. If you're not an actual trained climate scientist, Yeah. but why the fuck would you, would you, would you say it's not a problem? Why? why, Like, yeah. Why would you say with the anecdotal like, data points that we had that it's not a yeah, problem? And why even, would you want to be? Why would you want to be wrong about being wrong about this? <laughs> yeah, why, like, what, is, I, what, I, what good is that? There's nothing the part, good about that. That's, like, I would. Ra- this is this is literally. Is the it definition. just money, dude? This is literally the definition of safe. You know, uh, of, of, of right. being sa- you know safe rather than sorry. Exactly. This is this is it. This is the situation that mm-hmm. that sentence was written for. Because the sorry is a very big sorry. Oh, dude. You know, it's the sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the sorry, which is why you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting, man. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Unless you get into the conspiracy side of things where you, we actually, the people who really do know everything know that actually like a lot of us need to die off for the planet oh, yeah. to really that's, do well. We, that's the conspiracy side of things. Tune in next week for episode <laughs> two of Ben and Marcus talking about the flat earth. Uh, <laughs> a little different. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. It's crazy. Where we are at and right now is a crazy time. But I think everyone says that always. Yeah. Like everyone always thinks they're in a crazy time. Yeah. We, we, we are in a crazy time, though. Yeah. We, 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 are, we are in, um, you know, we, we are in an era of, of technology and, and we are industrializing the industrial revolution. Right. right? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And, and. Artificial intelligence. That mm-hmm. that you know, if, if you look at the things that have happened in the last thirty years relative to the last three hundred years, right? It's, 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 it's just it's exponential of, and it's getting crazy. That's, that's and technology exactly right. is like fueling all of that yes. and making it go so much quicker. Yes, yes, and and so this this is for sure different. Right, this and is it, different. Yeah, and you have to follow along with it because it's going that way no matter what. You can't fight it. You have to realize where it's going, and it's it's like a snowball. It's like not going to stop. Yeah. You know, unless everything does go to shit and we don't have technology anymore. Yeah, for some which reason. is possible. Yeah, I guess anything is possible. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. Anything's possible. I think that's the most freeing thing is just realizing that anything is possible. Yep. Dude, this has been a pleasure. Dude, this has been great. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I don't it's, always go over, over an hour. Des, we went over an hour, didn't we? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we been? Yeah. Uh, we are seven minutes off. Oh. Uh, perfect. No, it's not bad no, at all. No, it's good. Not I bad appreciate at all. this. Okay. It's a, it's a very good uh, inclusive just conversation. Okay, where can it. where can people uh find out more about it's be the the dot com. Okay. So B E T H E H I V E dot com. Yep. Instagram is the beehive. Um one thing I didn't say is we just we just got forty Whole Foods in the southeast region. Dude, congrats. With all that. So hopefully Amazing. that'll go. Um dope. And you know, yeah, just basically online technology, you know, you yeah. find out us about, you follow us on there, you figure that out and then you'll just see the, the growth and, and the church actually. And if you're on. lucky enough to live in Nashville, which a large percentage of the listeners and viewers of this show do, where can they come see you? So the deli is open right now, Saturday and Sunday, uh, 2414 Gallatin Avenue. It's right next to the subway. Um, and then soon it'll be like Tuesday through Sunday. Dope. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all should definitely check it out. I uh, I pretty much go there at least every other weekend. Uh, yeah, there's when cameras I'm, when I'm in there. Town. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> um, okay, man. Dude, we'll thank you so again, much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I appreciate you. Awesome. Peace.